So hi, this is Joy Vernon, and we are here with the Greater Seattle Tarot Meetup. And the topic for tonight is, should I start with tarot or oracle? And this is my basic introduction to cardomancy. Um, I chose this topic because uh, the, when Google sends me my monthly report on what queries send people to my website, the biggest query um, last month when I planned this was, should I start with tarot or oracle? So I said, great topic. Let's go ahead and pursue that a little further. So here's our agenda for tonight. We're looking at basically what are tarot decks versus oracle decks. Um, we'll do and um, we'll discuss oracle decks in detail as well as do an oracle card exercise. And then same thing, we'll look at tarot decks in detail and do a tarot card exercise. Um, if you have um, a tarot deck and an oracle deck both, I invite you to grab those. If not, um, I have some decks and can pull cards for people if you don't have a deck or don't have it with you. Um, then we'll explore uh, the difference, what we feel based on the exercise, what we feel the difference is between tarot and oracles. And then I'll explore crossover decks so that you can uh, move from one style of uh, cardomancy to the other. So first of all, let's start with what are tarot and oracle decks. And so the meaning of oracle. Oracle comes from the verb to speak. It refers not to any kind of deck, but rather to the person who speaks a prophecy or to the prophecy itself. However, in modern day usage, many people will use oracle to represent the tool itself used to receive the prophecy. Um, te technically, an oracle, because it is about speaking, is, is not so much about using a tool to, um, to create that speech, uh, but just uh, channeling it, or as in the illustration here, this is from the Oracle at Delphi, there was a, a crater or a crack in the earth that um, let off some fumes that were ap actually um, mind altering or uh, fumes and uh, so the oracle would sit above the fumes and then she would prophesy prophesy um so but some people do represent use the word oracle to represent the tool uh itself used to receive the prophecy such as a deck of cards and so in this sense all types of cards used for divination can be called oracle cards however i don't know any readers of oracles or of tarot that that talk about doing oracle divination. In fact, the word that's primarily used is actually cardomancy, which simply means card divination. So when looking at cardomancy, there's roughly three types of cards, and they are tarot cards, uh, what we call oracle cards, and what is often termed fortune telling cards. So in terms of how I'm breaking this down, tarot decks you're going to consider consist of your Tarot de Marseille, Rider Waite Smith, your Crowley Harris Toth deck, uh, your historical tarots. There's a lot and lot, lot of modern decks that are all follow that tarot structure, which is the 78 card structure. Oracle cards are going to consist of your angel cards, your animal cards, fairy cards, Crystal, unicorn, all kind, of, just all of that kind of stuff. Uh, oracle decks. We'll get into more about the details of what makes it an oracle deck in a minute. But that's that's basically what most people think of when they think of an oracle deck. Meanwhile, the fortune telling decks are more traditional, and that's your Lenormand, your Kipper, your Sibylla cards, Gypsy Witch, uh, just playing cards. Any of those are going to be uh, considered uh, fortune telling decks. And I'll, I'll see. I guess the most recent thing I had, which isn't that recent, it was probably a year and a half ago, but, um, uh, or a little more than a year ago, but a playing card reader that I know um, kept referring to his art as cardomancy and distinguishing it from tarot. So there will be people that, that limit cardomancy to, uh, to more of the fortune telling decks. I, I never learned it that way. Um, and I, cardomancy literally means card divination and that to me includes tarot. So for the purpose of this talk, um, I'm only gonna be talking about tarot and oracles. Um, the uh, fortune telling decks are all, 
also very structured the way tarot is um, and deser would deserve a talk of their own, uh, which I'm not going to get into. So for today, I'm only going to contrast tarot cards with oracle decks. So here are your oracle decks. And this is a display, a typical display that you might see at a metaphysical store. Um, oracle decks are rows from the fortune telling decks. Um, in the fortune telling decks, their history is that they started as pseudo board games in the 18th century and developed into forms of fortune telling in the 19th century. Um, Oracle decks don't have a particular structure to them. Some Oracle authors might choose to add a structure or to use some kind of structure to design their deck, but it's not, uh, it, it's not anything that's traditional or established. Um, Oracle decks are more likely to have meanings or affirmations printed right on the card, and they're more likely to have a theme uh, within the deck. So it's not a structure that ties the deck together, rather it's a theme that ties the deck together. And the theme again can be like angel messages or, you know, what do we see over here? You know, the magical times, I, I could actually have that one. Um, uh, Oracle of Visions, that's by Chiro Marchetti, I've got that one. A Kuan Yin Oracle, where all the cards are dedicated to the goddess Kuan Yin. Um, that's, that's kind of a, an example of a theme that would tie the deck together. There's a Ganesha one here. Um, here's just Fairies Oracle, and so that's just going to be uh, all fairies throughout the deck. So uses for Oracle decks are going to be a daily card message, just pulling a single card to get a message. Um, it can be a meditation focus or an altar card. Um, uh, Oracle decks can be used for magic and spell casting, just like tarot can. Um, a lot of readers, and I've heard um, teachers even, will pull a card at the end of a session or a class and uh, just use it to offer an uplifting message uh, at the conclusion. Um, uh, one uh, reader that I know it uses goddess oracles, such as that Quan Yin one I pointed out, to write meditations and to design goddess rituals. Um, in terms of readings with oracle decks, they're kind of, I call it inspire your way. Oracle card readings are typically calming, reassuring, and optimistic. So why would people choose Oracle decks to start? Um, first of all, many have gorgeous artwork. Um, people feel like they can start to use them right away with any need for extensive study due to the fact that keywords and or an actual interpretation is written on the card. They feel like they don't have to consult uh, the book as much. Uh, it's generally considered by most people to be easier to start. Um, and, and also more user friendly. There's less things to learn, so people assume it's easier to start, therefore. Um, we're going to go into an oracle card exercise now, um, and so I'm going to give you a few uh, tips for how to prepare yourself for a reading. And so if you follow these steps, you can prepare yourself to receive a clear and helpful reading. And the first thing is to ground and center. And basically that just means to calm yourself, to focus yourself. You know, if you're worried about something or, or if there's, um, you know, noise in the background, things like that, you want to kind of like get yourself into a quiet place somewhere where you can focus. And um, if you are a meditator, meditation is a great thing to do. If you uh, pray, sending, uh, you know, doing a prayer or doing um, a deity invocation, something like that are good things to, to practice. A typical um, grounding and centering meditation, and that's shown in the icon there, is a tree meditation where you um, sit up straight in your chair and imagine roots coming out from the bottom of your spine and from your legs and feet and roots going down into the earth and connecting with the earth energy. Meanwhile, from the top of your head, you feel branches extending. You can even, even from your arms, you can lift your arms if you like and feel the branches extending up towards the heavens and feel clean air on them and bright sunlight 
pour gentle rain and just feel the breeze ruffling your leaves and in its beautiful and calm and clear. And then connect the root energy, bring that root energy up into the heart from deep in the ground, all the nourishment that you get from deep in the ground and bring that up into the heart. And bring the clarity and the, and the breeze and bring that light down into the heart from above. And connect those two things at the heart. And that's a very simple grounding and centering meditation that you can do anytime but it's particularly useful before you're doing a reading for yourself. You can connect with the divine, such as your guides, your higher self, saying a prayer to a divinity. And then the next thing will always be to ask a clear question. And I prefer open-ended questions that are precise, they're detailed, but they are open-ended, so they're not just a yes or no question. Um, General principles would be kind of a, what would be the outcome if I, um, how can I better achieve such and such? Things like that. Uh, you, want the, you want your question to be able to be answered the, in the way that the cards speak, and the cards speak imagistically. So find your question, and then the last step is trust and be open to receive. And even if you don't trust the cards, even if you're new to this, it, that's totally fine. Be curious would be the other thing that you can do. Just be curious, be interested in what might happen, be open to discover something new, be open to find out something different. So for the Oracle card exercise, choose a deck. If you have an Oracle deck close by, go ahead and grab that right now. And then ask a question, write your question in the journal um, or on you know, whatever you've got nearby, but I think it's really good to write it down. Um, that way you know that you're um, being clear with that question. Then you'll shuffle the deck and randomly select one card. Take note of the words or affirmation that are on the card, and then take note of three details in the card and record them in your journal. And so for instance, if we drew this card here, it says, listen. And we see that there's a flower and, uh, and it's on uh, like a beach with water behind it. So my, my keyword is listen. And the details, I might say that the flower is a detail, but the thing that strikes me about the flower is the curl to it. And so I might address the idea of the curl, especially because it looks like an ear. And so I might, I might write down, you know, a curl or a spiral. Um, and then the waves which lap back and forth. And so I'd write down waves, and then that would get me thinking, well, waves tend to lap back and forth. That's kind of like a conversation where I have to, I speak and the waves are going forward, and then I listen and the waves are pulling back, and then I speak again. And it's like, oh, you know, maybe I, you know, maybe I want to be able to let my speech recede more often and so on and so forth. You're just going to note those details and you'll, and you'll take some notes on them. And then, at, and then we'll use that imagery to answer your question. Of course, I didn't ask a question, um, so <laughs> I don't know what it means. <laughs> but, um, but, but whatever question you have, you would use those details to arrive at an answer. Now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we'll uh, uh, walk through this particular exercise. Okay, did, did anybody already do it or does anybody need me to pull a card for them? I, I had, uh, I, uh, <laughs> this sort of happened without, doesn't seem to be relevant to my question and I'm using, uh, a deck called the way of the horse okay. and um, 
it has a wonderful book with it that talks about the gift and the challenge and then some an in-depth article about kind of the journey of what the car signifies. I was getting ready to shuffle, this card fell out. Okay. Look familiar, Joy? Is, that's like a centaur archer, kind of Sagittarian type of card? Um, yeah, it's, it's like the, it's Chiron. Okay. That's, that's okay. the name of the card. And it, well, it, well, it doesn't have much to do with the question that I asked, which was about, should I switch back and finish this other novel that I've set aside? Okay, so what were the three details that you wrote down? Um, aiming high, so the aiming. archer is aiming Good. high. Good, okay. Um, and he's kind of a mis mythical creature. Okay, good. And, well, I know, what I know about this character is that he is wounded. Right, and yeah. His wound is what gives him some of his power. Yeah. I guess it does kind of answer my question. So yeah, so apply those three details and how would, how would you use those to answer that question? If I talk, if I think of it in context of this storyline of the book, there, it takes place in Wales, which is a land steeped in mythology and mystery. Yeah. Um, and the book feels like I started something that's more complicated than a beginner should have started with. Oh, okay. But, um, this seems to affirm that aiming high is not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, awesome. I'll have to think more on the aspect of the wound as it relates to the, the story, I guess. Well, and I would say, I mean, my, the way I would put those three together is that if you, um, it was, what were the three? It was aim high. It was um, um, mythology, the oh, mythical mythological. creature. Yeah. yeah, okay. And so, yeah, so that to me says that um, should you uh, put this aside and work on something else for a while, the answer would be no, because you should aim high, which is what you're doing with the current project. Uh, you should uh, work within a mythological structure, which is one of the things that's informing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you should address your wound, and it would be the wound that is uh, it, that is asking you to set aside this and go to something different. And so the think of the wound as empowering, because that's how you described it. And so think, you know, vulnerability is a wonderful thing to have as an, as an author. It's huge. And so, um, you know, feeling not good enough is a really good place to be. That's where the, usually the, it's usually where the greatest people are <laughs> and where the beginners are. <laughs> and then, and then people that, and you, what you don't ever want is to fall into <laughs> Yeah, overconfidence. So, so embrace your wound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, it's really funny. When I first looked at it, I, I didn't see any connection to the question at all. But, um, but it felt, it felt, it kind of flopped out of the deck. Nice. Yeah. Well, I love it. And, and I like, uh, that's one of the things, I think this is a great exercise. I can't, I don't know. It's so simple. I came up with it quite a number of years ago. I think maybe 2013 is the first time I taught it. It's just like, take note of three details. Now explain the card. And, and once you do that, it just comes together and, and, and you achieve the answer that was eluding you just from uh, looking, you know, right. just from the title of the card or whatever. Okay, awesome, good, good. Laura, let's uh, hear what you've got. I have the Mystical Shaman Oracle. Nice. And coming out of a 30-year, 30 38-year marriage just within the last six weeks, my question was, how should I proceed with this new life? Oh, nice. And the card that I pulled was Stand Still. Okay, the card actually looks like... Um, well, first of all, the card is reversed. It was upside down. 
The actual picture on the card shows somebody sitting outdoors. It looks like they're maybe sitting on a rock in a meditative pose. Okay. And the card is stand still. So the three things that I pulled from the card were somebody sitting in meditation, relaxed, and quiet. Okay, good. That kind of the message that I get from that is, although it's reversed, so I have a little difficult. Uh, I wouldn't worry about the reversals. Cards. That it might be too, and I don't. I don't think do oracle decks typically are they even typically read with reversals? I well, I, it depends on the oracle deck. Most are not. Okay, thanks, Michelle. This particular um, deck. There is, in the book, they have something called the essence, which is the basic understanding of the card. Okay. The invitation is the card when read upright. The medicine is when the card comes in reverse. Oh, okay. So, so, that, does, so they, that does have a system. So, yeah. So that's your medicine. Yes. So, okay, so let's go back. So you, you described the person was sitting in meditation and you said they were sitting on a rock? It Did looks you... like it. Um, and under a muted, tree, so right? No, not under a tree, but under, it, they're outdoors. It's uh, kind of, it looks like it might be uh, evening time, uh, like a sunset. Um, oh, okay, but let's. I would like what I would like to do um, is to. We're pulling the three things. We're pulling the three uh, things from the image. So when you said um, um, relaxed and quiet, those are not things that we see in the image. They're not details that are in the art. Those okay. are experiences that we have when we look at the art. Um, and Very so good. I would I would advise the idea of adding as your other two things the rock and perhaps the sunset. Although I don't remember exactly what words you did you just used to describe it the first time around. So maybe there was something else in there that I'm just not remembering. Um, so so now if we do that, what would the three details be? Um, I guess it would be sunset. It would be outdoors, and it would be sitting in meditation. Okay, so sitting in meditation, outdoors, and sunset. Okay, good. And this is your medicine because it came up reverse, so it's something that you're going to do for healing, correct? Correct. And so say the question again. How should I proceed with this new life? How should I proceed with this new life? And so, um, I mean, to me, the answer comes quickly into, uh, you know, the sunset, watching the old things go away. Um, but the sitting and meditation is that you don't have to, you don't have to make the new things happen. You can sit quietly and the, the change happens around you. The sunset happens around you and you're out in nature and, um, and just, that would just, to me, be a really good medicine anyway for anybody is spend more time in nature. Um, and, and so um, those are, those are the, that's how I would answer that question, um, is not so much to take action, which would be an upright meaning, but rather to let, to observe and to, well, the card itself is, is be still or stay still or something like that. Just let yeah. things unfold around you. Um, what, uh, how would you interpret it now that you've got some things to think about? Um, that's pretty much how I did interpret it. Um, it was pretty much, it's not take action. It's just sit back, relax, deep breaths, just let it kind of come to you just yeah that's sort of how i interpreted it as well good um, good good yeah so then when i read up on it then it's pretty that's pretty much what it's kind of saying to um but yeah so that was a good exercise i did enjoy that 
Awesome, good. I'm gonna go back because I've got a number of things for you guys. So I'm gonna go back and um, uh, continue on with this. Sure. Okay, tarot. So tarot developed as a trick-taking card game in the 15th century. Um, it started being used for fortune telling um, like other forms of cardamancy in the 18th century and was given an esoteric overlay during about a hundred year period from the late 18th into, uh, through the end of the 19th century. Um, tarot always has a particular structure that applies to all tarot decks. There's the major arcana, the minor arcana, the minors are subdivided into four suits uh, based on the four elements. Each suit has uh, court cards, which are the people cards, and the pips, which are the numbered cards. So in this structure is the foundation upon which the meanings of the cards are built. So often on a tarot card, you might see a card title. Um, uh, you might not. Some do, some don't have the card title. You probably will see a number. Um, possibly the suit uh, icon, although they also, it might be indicated uh, in the border and or will be incorporated into the artwork. Um, there might be a keyword printed on some tarot decks uh, that's less common. And as a general rule, I think most tarot readers don't like keywords on their decks. Um, and tarot is a lot less likely to have a meaning or affirmation included on the card itself. And some decks have themes such as uh, angels, animals, fairies, mythology, uh, history. So if you like your theme decks, you can definitely still find those in, uh, in tarot decks. There's mermaid tarot decks and, and, um, and all those kinds of things. Um, the symbolism in tarot is um, more structured. It tends to be more, more coherent throughout the entire deck um, and, uh, and integrated throughout the deck. A uh, tip for your first tarot deck, I recommend working with something that has an illustrated minor arcana in which the numbered cards um, have scenic images of people doing things, not just the suit pips or abstract art. And this shows, this is a, a really good example in the Morgan Greer deck here, this eight of, of pentacles, you know, he is hammering a pentacle and has other pentacles hanging on the wall behind him. And so that's a nice clear action that he's that he is doing work and he is uh, specifically carving a, you know, a disc here. Um, the same with the the other uh, cards here, the nine of cups tends to not have an action, but that in and of itself is a bit of an action because it's a uh, more a card of kind of indulgence and he's looking pretty comfy and, and uh, pretty, pretty nicely dressed and he's got all the um, the cups at his disposal um, and so on and so forth. You want to look for things like that. They give you something to work with. So uses for tarot decks. Just like oracle decks, you can do daily card messages. You can use it for meditation or an altar card. Um, magic and spell casting. Um, tarot decks are really good for initiatory and ritual work because of their structure. Um, oracle decks are going to be less useful for that because there's no hierarchy and initiation is usually about um, advancement through a series of stages. And if there's not a hierarchy inherent to the system, there's no advancement. Whereas with tarot, the innate structure of it uh, actually uh, therefore uh, creates this potential to uh, progress. Um, but also it can just be used for understanding yourself and the world around you. Um, the readings, uh, unlike Oracle decks, the readings for tarot with tarot cards are more of a map your way instead of inspire your way. I still think tarot can be pretty inspiring, but, but it's definitely going to be more of that map your way. Tarot card readings, they tend to balance pros and cons. They offer practical advice and they often anticipate likely outcomes.
So why people might choose a tarot deck to start their cardomancy practice. Perhaps they prefer a traditional system. They might work best with more of a structured approach to learning. Um, a lot of people get into tarot because they're interested in esoteric philosophy of which tarot, as well as related arts such as astrology, alchemy, and Kabbalah are a part. Some of these, of course, I only listed three reasons under oracle cards and three reasons under tarot cards. And of course, there's going to be infinite, infinite reasons under either category. Um, but those are just some things that I thought of, some things that seem, um, that I seem to come across, um, you know, other people mentioning, you know, as to why they chose to get into what they got into. I do think, I don't know if this is true of Oracle cards. I do think that there's a really big uh, tarot community. And so community is part of it because you're all working within a, a unified system. And so it tends to bring people together so that they can discuss that system. And Oracle cards, again, um, you can still get together and there's discussing the different artwork and, um, and things like that. Um, there's something about tarot, you can tell, and I will freely admit this, I'm definitely a tarot proponent. Um, I'm trying to be really fair to oracles, but if you notice me failing when I'm trying to like address the pros of oracle decks. It's not that I don't like them. It's just that I don't use them and they're not my thing. Tarot is my thing. Um, so, um, but I, I just feel like there's a huge community for tarot that's really active and it's a great way to, um, to connect with people. So we're going to do the same tarot card exercise as we did with the oracle card. So this time, instead of your oracle deck, grab your tarot deck. And again, we're going to use for this exercise, we want to use an illustrated tarot deck that has the scenic uh, pips. So the, the, the minor arcana numbered cards have um, uh, people doing things or animals doing something or or whatever and you can say even in this this is uh the wizards the new wizards tarot the one by barbara moore and um you can see that this guy is is coming down these steps carrying a bunch of books you know so there you know there is an action being taken he's dropping them because he's in a hurry um and so on this guy over here is teaching so you want to you want to see those you want to see those um you know this guy here seems to be blocking the way and pr protecting the people behind him you want to find those actions in the minor arcana cards and so um same thing we had before choose your deck ask a question, write it down in your journal, shuffle and select one card, take note of the words on the card, and take note of three details in the imagery of the card and record them in your journal. And then how does that imagery answer your question? So I am gonna give you a second to do that and um, I'll stop the, um, I'll stop the screen sharing right now and we can discuss that. Okay, who did the um, exercise and wants to share? Maybe some different people this time? Okay. Um, yeah, I was just writing this down. I, I needed a minute to come up with a question because I was kind of, wasn't coming to me. And um, what came to me was, how can I achieve more clarity of thought? Wow. And I'm using the Prism Vision deck. The Prism Visions? Yeah. Okay. And the tower. <laughs> okay. So, uh, that's oh, a that's good just, card for clarity. Yeah. That's, how fun is that? Wow. Um. So in look in just looking at the three things here, of course, the thing that really sticks out is this real bright yellow. And it's like a yellow tunnel a yellow cave it's illuminated wow it's surrounded by you know, darkness but this is so obviously light that it just draws your eye and there's like a little throws the light around it and then the other thing that really struck me was of course this tall multi-story uh, dwelling here were interesting. All the windows are lit. 
Oh, cool. The thing is lit up there. Nice. And then the other third thing I noticed, this might be really hard to see. There's just a little tree coming up here. On oh, the wow. So it doesn't have any leaves that I can see. It's just bare branches, but it's all twisting up into the darkness. So those are the three things that really um, struck out at me. And I, I'm looking at this like, well, how does that answer the question to get clarity of thought? And um, just brainstorming and what I see here is the tree represents kind of where I'm at now, where I'm not having clarity of thought maybe, and that the um, all the lights coming on in the, the, the house or dwelling, and then maybe going into a more of a spiritual meditation realm to give this more foundation. I love it. Yeah, so, and I like your initial description of the light being in a cave. Makes me definitely think of going into the darkness to find yeah. the light. Yeah. That, that was my impression, too. It's like you have to go in there. Yeah. In order to find this because you, you're gonna have to get up there somehow. That's, it's exciting. I love it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> eager to hear <laughs> what comes of it when you start doing that. Yeah, I, you know, I'll try that. And I, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave this card out so I can look at it yeah. in the coming week. And yeah. And just see how I can work with it. Nice. And, and see what happens. And then I'll, I'll take notes. Awesome. Very, very cool. So my follow-up question is, uh, what are my what are my next steps with this novel? Okay. Um, and I used the Mystic Fairy deck and pulled the Five of Pentacles. Okay. And the three things I notice are there's a lot of broken stems and half-eaten apples around her. Okay. So something bad happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she's sitting and looking down so she could either be contemplating or be a little bit discouraged and that really kind of describes the state of where i am with that that project right now um but then there are these little bubbles all around see those yeah yeah um so i the way i kind of feel that i should pull these together is that um uh, Things may seem like a mess right now, but those those little bubbles are like thoughts and stuff is starting to float around in there. And that maybe I need to sit down and just do some thinking and journaling about where I am with the structure of the novel. Say the question again. The question is, what are my next steps with, next steps. with Bar Sinister, the, the novel? That's the, the working novel. title. Okay, and your so so the question is, what are your next steps? And then your details were the the kind of broken apple and broken stems and things, the bubbles. What was the third thing again? Um, the her her position that she's oh, right. sitting down and looking yeah. down. You know what that tells me. Um, again, I like to try to get as much detail and practical advice out of the uh, imagery as we can. The broken apples to me represent the things that you've uh, thrown out from the novel. Discarded scenes, discarded ideas. Go back through the discarded stuff and see and look down into the waste that you have from things that you didn't think were working and see if something percolates and some bubbles come up from it. And oh, that might be back on track. Joy, you're brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Good at reading tarot, not brilliant. <laughs> 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 so awesome. I love it. Uh, that was, that was a really good, that was a good one. Yay.
Okay, so um, tarot or oracles, what's the difference? Which did you like better? Which did you think was easier? Uh, tarot can grow with you. And this is, this is a bit of, my, I'm a little bit proselytizing for tarot. And, um, and one of the things that I like about this exercise is it shows you, it puts tarot and oracle side by side and say that without any experience, you can get a good answer from a card without knowing any of the tarot structure, without knowing any of the, the, the learning stuff about tarot, the knowledge-based stuff. You can still get started with tarot just the same way you can get started with an oracle. So that's my, that's the soapbox that I am on. Um, and so, uh, and of course, to me, the benefit of tarot, I'm just gonna go straight ahead and jump into mine, but I'm gonna wanna listen to your, your ideas too. But my, my thing about tarot is that it can grow with you. And so it lets you start simple um, and get these answers just as easily as you can from an oracle, but it gets deeper as you work with it. So um, I'm gonna turn it back to you guys and hear what uh, has been, uh, what you felt. Did you feel that there was a difference when you were looking at the two different types of decks? Uh, did you have a preference for one over the other? And did you think one was easier than the other? Well, for me, I think the chair was easier. Um, I know with Oracle, I don't have a lot of Oracle decks, but I do have a few. I just love the art. Yeah. And I just, um, sometimes I think after I do a tarot reading, I like to just, I don't do it very often, but just pull an Oracle card to see what it, to just add some more color or Okay. Yeah. So, the, so Oracle adds color uh, for you. So that's a good yeah. way of looking at it. But you actually thought tarot was easier, but you're more yeah. familiar with it. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Who else? It's always going to be tarot for me. Always tarot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've kind of got the wrong audience <laughs> for this. <laughs> it's always going to be tarot for me. I mean, I always like pretty Oracle decks and I like having them for different reasons. Um, I, I used to a long time ago read, use them for significators. I don't anymore. Um, but like I said, recently there's been kind of a, a, a deeper set of oracles, which I like, which are these oracles that come with meditations for each card, which I find a lot better than just the kind of flowy, uh, Dorian Valenti ones, where it's just a bunch of artists do a bunch of pictures and everything without any kind of structure. So I'm I, I willing to say that, but it's always going to be tarot for what I use. I do. I like having Oracle decks for a daily card, though. This is something okay. else that's my reading with tarot. So okay, but there's very few that I I I'll try it for it once, but there's very few I go back to and use again. Right, right. Okay. Um, there was a time when I would have said Oracle decks because I, for a long time, I was so drawn to tarot, but it was overwhelming uh, to me. Uh, but now I would say that I prefer tarot because um, I think Laura said that it's for, for the depth. There's just yeah. more, especially for the decks that are rich, that are scenic, rich with imagery, there's just a lot that you can get from even a single card. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Natalie says that the tarot deck gives her more of a concrete, actionable step, whereas she finds the oracle decks to be more vague. Um, or at least the one she was using tonight to be more vague. And Laura says that she finds the Oracle deck to be quick and easy. However, she prefers the tarot for its depth. So uh, crossover decks, this is something that I have not included in this talk previously and wanted to add in. Um, I think it's interesting. There's more and more crossover decks and more and more ways that uh, tarot and oracles are kind of weaving together. 
Um, and so I'm going to look at both crossover decks moving from oracles to uh, moving to oracles from tarot, and then we'll also look at the opposite of moving to tarot from oracles. So if you are already a tarot reader but would like to experiment more with oracle decks, um, these are some of the tips that I have. And so some of the Oracle decks are divided into elemental suits, and that includes the Sacred World Oracle by Chris Walder and the Transformation Oracle by Sonia Shannon. And um, there's probably many others. Those are just two that I happen to own. I don't have a lot of Oracle decks. Um, the use of the four elements is similar for, to tarot, is familiar to tarot readers um, because of the four suits. And so it makes it easier to switch to oracles. Um, and um, and uh, Michelle mentioned the idea of more and more oracle decks are following some kind of structure. So an oracle deck that has more structure to it is going to generally be more appealing to a tarot reader. Uh, if you love a certain tarot artist, check out to check and see if they have oracle decks as well. For example, uh, Chiro Marchetti has many tarot decks. He has a, the Oracle of Visions. He might have some other oracle decks. I'm not entirely certain um, if there's more than the Oracle of Visions, but he also has some fortune telling decks. He has a Kipper deck and he has a Lenormand deck. Um, and, uh, and like I said, many tarot decks. So um, familiarity with the artist style makes it easier to switch. It's like I'm already familiar with the, this type of artwork. So it becomes quite easy to make the transition over into the Oracle decks. The other thing is to try finding Oracle decks with themes that you already know and love. And again, for tarot readers that are often, not always, but often more interested in things like astrology and um, esotericism. Um, look into anything. Um, I pulled out some more uh, esoteric types of things. There's a sacred geometry oracle, which is by John Michael Dreer, Greer. And there's the Oracle of Dr. John D, which is um, one of the John Matthews uh, decks. And um, the Camelot Oracle also by John and Caitlin Matthews and illustrated, I'm pretty sure that one's illustrated by Will Worthington. Um, there's flower and herbal oracles, um, which again, um, the idea of, of using a deck to study something, you know, if, you're, if you wanna use a deck to study something, you, you can use an Oracle deck as well as you can use a tarot deck. Um, uh, so, but, but any theme that you are, that you are interested in, you know, follow that and, uh, and experiment, find some, find some, um, some decks that, that, uh, exhibit that theme. I used as the illustration here, I used the Arthur Rackham Oracle. There's an Arthur Rackham Tarot. In fact, there's, I think there's two Arthur Rackham Tarots, the one published by Llewellyn uh, Low Scarabeo and um, the one p by Schiffer that is um, the ring cycle um, tarot. The guy that did this uh, uh, Rackham Oracle deck, he's got tons of fabulous decks, really nice decks. And, um, you know, get the Arthur Rackham tarot deck and the Arthur Rackham Oracle deck and work them side by side and start to, trans, you know, let your tarot cards take you into the Oracle deck, let the Oracle deck take you into the tarot cards, kind of uh, play them against each other and and see what happens. It might help open up some um, ways of looking at oracle cards. I know a lot of tarot readers that when they read oracle cards, they see tarot images in the oracle card images. And so they just continue to use their tarot knowledge uh, when they're reading uh, oracle cards. It's just that the deck doesn't have the full structure of the, of the, of the tarot. So uh, crossover decks moving to tarot from oracles. So if you are um, already an oracle card reader and you want to get started with tarot, the, I think the worst thing you can do is buy a quote unquote beginner tarot deck, um, which is going to be a Rider Waite Smith deck, um, unless you study with me, in which case you're not allowed to use that deck. <laughs> 
Um, I love the deck. I have absolutely no nothing wrong with the deck. I think it's brilliant. And I do think that everybody needs to have all of the images of the Rider Waite Smith deck in their brain, as well as the images of the of the uh, Tarot de Marseille, as well as the images of the Toth Tarot and um, and all the basic some of the historical decks. You got to have all that stuff in your head. However, I don't think that any of those decks are good to start with. So what you want to do when you're when you're an oracle reader that wants to move to tarot, find decks, tarot decks that read like your oracle decks. And um, some people call them tear oracles. Um, and um, I'm not 100% certain that I'm using the term right. But what I personally have noticed is that many tarot decks nowadays don't use the suit icons, the wands, cups, swords, and pentacles in the artwork. And that gives the artist free reign to create a more oracle-like image. So if you're very image uh, oriented, you really love the beauty of the oracle decks, try to find some of these other decks that, that, that play off of that more. Dreams of Gaia, Tarot de la Nuit. Um, there's a lot of the fine art decks like the Arthur Rackham deck. Um, there's the, the Edmund Dulap deck. Um, uh, there's a Klimt deck, um, things like that. Uh, ease into the tarot structure while appreciating the art that you love. If you have a favorite oracle deck author, check to see if they have a tarot deck. So same advice as from um, going from tarot to oracles, but now the, now the other way around. If you've got a favorite oracle deck author, see if they've got a tarot deck. Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine, last I knew they had three tarot decks. Um, Colette Baron reed um, is known for lots and lots of oracles, but she does have at least one tarot that I know of. Tony Carmine Salerno has some really, really beautiful artwork, lots of oracle decks, and, uh, and this tarot deck, uh, which is, I bought it as the Art of Love tarot, but I believe it has a different name now. Find tarot decks with themes that you love. If you like, if you like oracle decks because they're animal decks or fairy decks or mermaid decks or, or flower decks, there are there's herbal tarot. There's there's animal tarots. There's uh, all of those things. Anything that you can find in an oracle deck, you can probably find in in a tarot deck. Um, animal fairies, literary tarots, witchy tarots, um, so many, uh, so many more. And you'll be certain to find a great deck for you. So I really I really encourage you to um, you know check out whatever you're whatever you're used to. Check out the other thing and and see how you feel about it. My first Oracle deck was by John Michael Greer, who is an author that I read a lot of, and he had a Sacred Geometry Oracle, and so I bought that. Um, but I think my second one I literally bought because I was teaching this class, um, and um, like in 2013. And so I went out and bought a couple Oracle decks so that I could um, have something to say about them. And the very first Oracle deck was this Sacred World Oracle by um, Chris Walder. And I love her artwork. I mean, she's got some really good tarot decks. She's got the Lover's Path tarot and she's got the Goddess tarot. Um, and it just uh, really amazing. And this is probably the first time I actually tried to do a divination with a deck and um, and did this exercise. It's when I developed the exercise and I pulled the card called Spider. And man, I've got like a huge write up. I think I have it on my blog. I got so much detail out of that card um, and, and did a really, did a great reading with it. And I was like, okay, so these Oracle decks are not as bad as I thought they were. Um, and they're still, I still, I mean, I've tried Lenormand, I've tried different things and they don't, they're just not, they don't go as deep as I need them to go. Um, so tarot is still my favorite, but give, by giving a chance to the Oracle decks, I really felt like I opened up some understanding and some knowledge. So I encourage you to give it a try. Likewise, if you're already familiar with Oracle, I really encourage you to give Tarot a try. So anybody else have anything to kind of throw in and add to our conversation here? Finding a topic you like, like just like Tarot, um, don't just get an Oracle deck to get an Oracle deck, you know, try to find ones that 
happy. Yeah. I think that, I think that holds true for either. Yeah. Cool. I've got, um, I've got a couple other slides that I just want to touch on really briefly and then we'll be done. So I have a, a number of resources on my blog and I just want to point that out. Um, starting in January of maybe 2018, I think, I started a little series. Um, I didn't get as far as I wanted on it, but I might return to it at some point. Um, but I was calling it interoduction. And, um, and I do have a post called Tarot or Oracle. And that's, that post has uh, a number of uh, some of the things that we talked about today, but just so it goes into a little more detail on a few things. Um, choose your perfect tarot deck. Um, uh, I have a advice uh, when you're choosing your first deck or any choosing your next deck. Um, I've got a bunch of factors to consider that'll help narrow it down. So you so you're not like <laughs> so the so very many people that just wander into the metaphysical store and are like, uh, I want to buy a tarot deck, <laughs> and it's like, good. <laughs> what do you want? They're like, I don't know. <laughs> so this this uh, that post will help you narrow it down so you have at least a few ideas of something you might like. Um, I do have two uh, posts listing six of my favorite tarot decks that I recommend for beginners. Um, and then I have the top 10 tarot benefits. So even though I had only a few things listed in our uses of tarot slide, um, if you want to get a lot more information um, and a lot more benefits, please check out that post. And then the tarot lineages and reading styles, which I think is um, I think is useful if you um, already are starting to get familiar with tarot and want to uh, learn a little bit more about the variety that is offered within it, um, or if you're the type that likes to have more of a broad view before you dive in, then um, looking into what the t different lineages are is uh, that this post is a great place to start with that. And of course, thank you very much for attending and joining me today for Should I Start With Tarot or Oracle? Um, please visit my website, joyvernon.com. Um, my blog, you can get to it via uh, completelyjoyous.com. Um, there's all kinds of fabulous events that we have every month with the Greater Seattle Tarot Meetup. So please join us for um, lots of upcoming stuff, tarot stuff, um, astrology stuff, um, uh, uh, we try to mix it up a little bit. And of course, I would love it if you would check out my uh, YouTube and, um, and, uh, and subscribe there as well. That's good. Thanks, Joy. Awesome. Good. I'm going to try that exercise on a few different Oracle decks, what we did good. tonight, and just see the differences. Yeah, good. Good, just good. See. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Okay. Thanks, Joy. Bye. Bye. Bye.